G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today is the day we finally get to do the fit out on the inside of the trailer. That means fridge, drawer, custom floor, custom 12 volt. I'm excited for this, so let's get into it. Alright, welcome back. In the last episode, if you missed it, we actually managed to paint the whole thing black. Except for the drawer bar, there's a lot of comments about me not painting the drawer bar. The reason I didn't paint it is because Raptor's a lot more expensive than Stone Guard, and I plan on Stone Guarding the underneath of the trailer and the drawer bar. So don't worry, it will get painted. But anyway, on to today's video. We are doing an internal fit out on the trailer. We have a fridge. We have so many parts to install in this little trailer here. First thing I've done this morning, which you've probably just seen, is I installed this little latch to actually lock the door out at full swing. So on the inside here, we are gonna have a fridge drawer and a normal drawer. I was actually gonna make a custom drawer, but I did go out and just buy the 1300 Kings drawer. Look, I know it would have been nice to make a custom drawer, but I really wanna get this trailer done and finished, and the quickest way to do that is to buy a drawer. I worked out the price, it would have been roughly the same amount to actually build my own, but hey, I've done it, I've gone out and bought a drawer. So before I actually start mounting anything inside the trailer, I think it's a good idea to actually do the kitchen table first, which is gonna drop down off this rear door here, and that is because when this shuts, we might run into a clearance issue because we're gonna have a table on the inside of here. I definitely don't wanna go ahead and bolt a drawer and a fridge in there and then find out that the door doesn't fully shut. What I'll do first up is I'll look at mounting the table on the side here. Have no idea how I'm gonna do it, but I'm sure I can figure it out. So nice having this lock into place already. Not gonna swing out, hit me in the bum while I'm working. As you can see, the table is now done. The only thing I had in the shed to use as a tensioner was some black chain that I had laying around. So I did have to stagger these screws, otherwise the head's actually butted, if, if that makes sense. Obviously don't have a uh, holder, but as you can see, drop down, decent sized table, it's at a decent height, and obviously if you're cooking on it and that sort of stuff, it's not gonna um, get too affected by the wind. I probably will end up eventually getting a metal version of this, by the way, or um, at least fully painting that one. But I think metal would be a lot better, so I'll probably end up getting a metal one. But for now, this is absolutely fine, this piece of wood. So now that that table's done, I can actually start mocking up the rear. We can chuck the fridge in, we can chuck the drawer in and just see how everything closes up. Now this is just some of the stuff I've bought to help kit it out. So I'll start unboxing everything. Right here we have that 1300 long kings drawer and over there we have our fridge so let's get that stuff in this doll All right, so they are in and I did just shut the door and it actually fouled, this screw was actually hitting up here. So I just had to move that down and bolt it this time, which is probably even better. Now I've obviously got those two sitting in there and they are looking pretty bloody good, if you ask me. But what I am planning on doing, I have a roll of carpet just over there 
And what I'm actually planning on doing is getting rid of this top. I'm gonna to peel the carpet off the front of this and actually put my carpet on so it's all uniform and we're gonna make a false floor. Now the reason that I want the fridge on this side and the drawer on this side is you can see the drawer goes the whole way back in the trailer. So I am planning on doing a dual battery system obviously and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put the battery up in the back corner here. It's only because I want to be able to access it. I wanna be able to pull the floor up and actually get to that battery just in case something was to happen. Ideally, I'd probably prefer the fridge on that side just because it's closer to the kitchen, but it really won't matter that much. The obvious thing is when you open these up, they don't open because they actually hit on this rail here. Same with the drawer. So we're gonna to have to chock everything up or space everything up. I have the distance pretty well set. We only need to leave about 20 mil off the face there and everything will clear. Now I do plan on having a switch panel right about here, so that'll be good. Um, it'll control lights and all that sort of stuff and I am actually thinking about putting a light up the top here as well. So what I'm gonna do is take the lid off this drawer and I'm gonna start looking at chocking everything up and actually mounting it to the trailer. Yeah, it's actually looking pretty sick, not gonna lie. I just don't like that Kings use this blue carpet. I actually really hate it, a lot of people paint it. But like I said, we'll wrap it up in our own stuff and I think this will turn out bloody good. All right guys, how good does that look? The drawer and fridge is completely mounted. You can see it all opens up. It clears quite well and I've got it as level as possible. Um, because this floor actually isn't level, it's actually bowed everywhere. Uh, that was kind of a pain in the ass to do, but anyway, we got it done. So what I did is I mounted the drawer first, obviously, and then I actually bolted through the side into these mounts because it has these little uh, riv nuts in it everywhere. So I bolted two through the side and I've got one mount just sitting over there on the mud guard. So it's only got three in it, but I'm pretty sure it's sturdy enough to compete. Now the reason I wanted that to be perfectly level is because when I put the false floor on, I want it to be able to rest on this. I couldn't get a sheet big enough to do this whole thing in one run. So I have to have a seam somewhere. I'm thinking about making the seam down this line here so I can actually screw off to the center of that. She's definitely coming together now and I can't wait to get rid of this carpet and make it all look nice and neat. Diesel's having fun with the cardboard box. Are you allowed to be doing that? Making a mess for me, mate. It is currently the next day. Yesterday, it started bucketing down rain and because I'm in a tin shed, it's not too great to film. So I just completely gave up on yesterday. Now what you guys seen, but probably have no idea what I was doing is me installing these bars on each side. And there's one just at the back right there. Now what I've put them in for is so that when I lay the ply top on, everything is perfectly flat. You can kind of see here that everything is perfectly level across the board now. So that is bloody awesome. When I want to do something, I kind of sit there and procrastinate and procrastinate about how I'm actually going to do it and achieve it. And leveling off this floor was one of those things that in my head, I just could not figure out how I was going to do it. I didn't know if before I painted, I should have actually welded tabs on, but then I didn't know how high this setup was going to be. I didn't know if I'd have to build a frame off the floor and back down and across just to support the floor. I honestly think we've kind of nailed it. I'm very, very happy with how it's going to work out. My current plan is to actually have probably a floor coming across here 
and then one up in that back corner and those two will be permanently mounted and have one here that I can actually lift up and remove out of the trailer just to inspect the dual battery system. Right here will be the battery. I'm gonna try and get that over to the center as much as possible because it's bloody heavy. Probably gonna do our little dual battery setup and management system right there. So I'm hoping today we can get a lot more done. I would love to get the bulk of the electrics in and um, start to get the ply floor cut up. Quick tip when trying to find a drill bit size is to use the base of it and make sure it actually covers what you're trying to drill and you'll be good to go. I'm just gonna install one of these little vents here at the rear of the trailer just to help with the temperature inside the tub. Right, the battery is now in the trailer and fully mounted up. Thing turned out mint. It's actually just about the perfect height. You can see it's just below where our level is going to be, which is great. Now, I decided to turn it around that way because the positive lead is going to come out to here because I've got an idea for our management system. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video. I'm very proud to say that the sponsor of today's video is Red Ark. If you don't know who Red Ark are, then you probably made your way over to this video from a bloody puppy video or something because Red Ark are the leaders in 12 volt in Australia. They are an Australian company and they're 12 volt system systems are made for Australian conditions, which is great. This is the BCDC 1240D. This thing is gonna manage our dual battery system in the trailer. I am absolutely pumped to be putting this thing in the trailer and thank you to Red Arc for sending this out. So let's have a look inside this box. The best thing about these things is you can actually use a smart alternator and an old school alternator um, style charging. If you don't know what that is, I'm not gonna go into it in this video, but just be wary that there is two different types of alternators and you do need to get the right battery charger for your system. And when I say these things are built for Australian conditions, inside of here, there is actually a motherboard and the motherboard is gel coated. So there's no actual open circuitry inside this thing. It means it's waterproof, it means it's dust proof, and it means it's gonna stand up to anything that you throw at it. And I think that is bloody good. Now the other thing that is worth noting is these things work up to I believe 80 degrees Celsius which means that being inside a black trailer heat is not going to be a problem. Um, I can't see the trailer ever getting to 80 degrees Celsius. I do believe that you should try and save money doing a dual battery system as they can get very expensive but one of these charges is honestly the go guys. These things are bloody great. I actually reached out to Red Arc, not the other way around. So I'm glad that they decided to send me one out to try because I am friggin' loving it. Now you do have to mount these charges very close to your second battery, not to the actual charging battery. So what I'm thinking is I'm probably gonna put it just about there, but I do have a little trick up my sleeve to make it look a little bit neater. What I have is this plexiglass here. I'm thinking about making just a mini little panel to just sit in there to actually mount this and some fuses to. I think it'll come up a lot neater and look a lot nicer. So what we're gonna do is cut this up and make a little plate to mount onto there. I'll use some roof nuts as well so it's removable and we'll make this look bloody awesome.
All right, as you can see, we have that cut. I just added a little mount. That's one of these um, these fridge mounts here. So I just added that just because it's a little bit flexy, as you can see there. Wish it was black, but that's all we got in plexiglass. Now I'm gonna pull that off and we're gonna mount this to it. Now this also needs a fuse. So we're gonna put a fuse in this on the same holder. I don't think there's anything else really that I need to put on that thing except for those two items. Here come the copper dogs. Now it'd be really nice if I had a piece of clear plexiglass on the top so I can actually see this readout. I think I'll end up doing that one day. But for now, we'll just get it mounted. So I'm gonna mount it right there. I might even drill a bigger hole here for the um, cables to go through so we can hide them in the back. And then I might put the fuse holder right about here so it's easy to get to just in case we pop a big fuse. I had to go out and buy six gauge wire, which is some fat ass expensive shit. And on the wiring diagram, we basically just follow this to a T. It's very, very simple. It's something Red Arc is really good at, is making things simple. We're not using these three wires because we are not lithium. We are not um, a smart alternator. So those three we don't need. Now, yellow is solar, black's earth. Uh, brown is my uh, second battery and red is my start battery, which is on the patrol or whatever vehicle I'm towing with. So first things first, get this thing mounted up. Then we can start looking at the wiring. All right, this is actually turning out pretty good. We've obviously got the management system mounted. This here is a little fuse. They actually recommend to use that special type of fuse. And as you can see right there, it's quite close to the battery on each side. So I imagine that means that the fuse going to your auxiliary battery has to be close to the auxiliary battery and the fuse going to your start battery has to be close to your start battery. What I need to do now is get this brown wire here. I need to put it up through this hole with a bit of heat shrink just to protect it from chafing and pop that one on there. Then the other side here will go out and go to our auxiliary battery. This is tedious and slow work, so I'm trying to power through it, but I am very happy with how that looks so far, and I'm keen to see it all done. I just went out and bought this um, soldering iron. I'm pretty keen to use it because it's just a battery. One of my Ryobi batteries go in it, and this is why I went with Ryobi because they have so many cool different tools. May not be the best quality, but they're working pretty well for me, and it's good to have a massive range with the one battery. Whoa, that heated up so quick. Dude, that Ryobi thing heated up in no time at all. And as you can see right there, it has done a bloody good job at heating up quite a thick wire. Ryobi, you've done it again, mate. All right, got the fuse all done and my cable cuts length. So now I just need to whack another terminal on that. Bloody keen to see it in there, actually. I think it's gonna look really, really good. I think it's come up nice and neat. Shut that off. And that is the finished product. We may as well finish installing this Red Arc system. So what I'm gonna do is do a common earth. So instead of running everything to the earth terminal on the battery, what I'm gonna do is create a common earth, so a bit longer of a thread, and actually run a lead right around and connect them all up. Kinda of hard to explain, but I'll show you what I mean once it's finished. Righto, that is gonna be my common ground. So now I just gotta make a lead to go from there to there and then our red arc can go onto it as well. I also need to drill a hole right around here to put a waterproof gland in to bring the Anderson plug up to here. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, because it does get bloody confusing. But basically what we are trying to do, imagine you have your car parked in front of here, which for me is gonna be the patrol. I need to bring a positive and a negative, some thick boys right here. I need to bring them all the way down and attach a plug to the tow bar. I'm gonna have a plug similar to this, but just an Anderson plug that plugs into that plug on the tow bar. Then we're gonna have wires coming down here and into the trailer, and it's gonna connect into our red arc. Our red arc, basically what it does 
is it's going to take the charge that your alternator is creating to charge your start battery and it's going to divert some of it down the red wire and it's going to put it into this battery here. So I'm going to finish wiring these up. So this one goes to earth, this one goes to our start battery and then I'm going to bring that Anderson plug and just leave a nice long lead out to the drawbar so we know we're ready to go once this gets bolted in. And then it's only a case of doing our 12 volt system up the front. So basically the charging system will be complete. Red Arc charger is now all installed on its own panel. It's bloody solid too, it's not going anywhere. That is probably the last time that'll get bolted in because it is fully wired up except for this just needs to be plonked on top. When I press that on top there, you can see we're all up and working. All the wiring come out nice and neat. You can see it's all tucked away there and it goes down that waterproof gland that I've got. You can see the earth terminal there all nice and neat now that waterproof gland comes out from under there and to our wires that will be going to the anderson plug that then go onto the ute the only wire that's left is the yellow which is solar input then i've just got to figure out where to put a solar panel so the sun actually bloody hits it because there's not much room left on this trailer and what i am thinking about doing too is just a tiny bit of plexiglass and i say plexiglass but what i'm actually thinking is over here with all my parts ready to go in I've got this staple gun, but as you can see, it's quite a nice clear little lid there. It's a bit milky, but it's quite strong. So I think that if I cut that out, I could then fit it over the top of this and you can actually get a readout. It'll be nice to know that you've got charge. So obviously quite a bit of progress has been made in this video, but everything is so slow and tedious and time consuming. So heading over to the bloody board now to tick off what we've done. We've done the fridge and the drawer. We're halfway through that we haven't fit the floor we haven't fit oh we've done the table we're not doing a sink anymore i was actually going to fit the sink in it in the next episode we will be fitting the floor and finishing the custom 12 volt system honestly guys this thing is turning out friggin' mint i love it ever since i painted it i'm just so keen to get it finished so keen to open up this cold fridge have a cold fridge bloody go camping let me know in the comments what you guys think about the trailer i read every single one of your comments although i can't reply to all of them i do read them as always thanks for bloody watching you guys are a pack of bloody legend if you do want to support the channel head to roamlife.com we have stickers we have t-shirts if not drop a like it really helps my videos and i will see you on the next episode where we can finally fit this floor all right catch you later man see you in the next episode all right Get ya!